Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to create three home decor projects using paper napkins. For this first one, I had this little set of wall hooks that were attached to a board and I took off the hardware. I just thought we could take it from farmhouse and glam it up a little bit. So once the hardware was removed, I sanded it smooth, cleaned off all of the dust, and then it was time to let that dry a little bit and then add some paint. I'm using Wise Owl's Chalk Synthesis Paint in Snow Owl, and I'm going to paint the sides and the front in two coats of this white paint. I'm doing that so that the image from the napkin is going to show to its best ability. Once that was dry, I again sanded smooth just to remove any brush strokes, cleaned off the dust, and now it was time for the fun part. I chose this beautiful napkin. All of these napkins were given to me by a friend recently, and they're just beautiful. I couldn't wait to create with them. I chose this design. I just love the hydrangeas and the blue and yellow color. It just seems so springy to me, and I thought it would be a really nice change for this piece. This is the tricky part. Your um, napkins will have several plies and you wanna work with the very top image layer. Next, it was time to apply my napkin and I'm using just an angled brush and light coats of Posh Chalk's pigment infuser, which is a decoupage medium, a pigment infuser, and it's also a sealer that can be used indoors or out. You'll see that I'm using a balled up piece of plastic wrap. It looks like I might be putting heavy pressure on, but I assure you I'm not. I'm being very gentle and using the plastic wrap to um, smooth out any wrinkles and adhere the paper to the top of the board. I then wanna go around and check all of my edges. That's always the tricky part and it's super important to make sure that you always check those. Now I'm sealing it and just putting a light coat of that pigment infuser on it again and I'm going to set this aside to dry. Once it's dry I'm going to just use some sanding block paper and remove all of the excess paper from my board. Now that that's done I'm going to take an awl and I want to repunch those holes. They were really easy to see because paper napkins are so thin. I wanted to add a little bit of gilding to this, and so I got out my Wise Owl paint. It's their heavy metals paint, and it is in the color Gold Dust, and I'm using a makeup sponge. I'm going around the edges and a little, just a little bit on the edges of the top, and I also painted the very back of the board in this beautiful gold color. I think it just adds a little bit of sparkle, and it, it really doesn't look farmhouse anymore. I also wanted to add a little bit of crackle and so I took that same paint and applied it to my brayer and then used a piece of IOD's Crackalure stamp and just applied some random crackle. Now those gray hooks were not going to go with this new look and so again using that same metallic paint and a makeup sponge I applied two coats of the metallic paint to the fronts and backs of the hooks. Also don't forget your screw heads because those will stick out like a sore thumb if you don't paint those as well. Then it was time to attach the hooks. I'm so pleased with how this project turned out. I just think it's so springy and beautiful. Let me know what you think, and I'd really love to know how you would use this. I was thinking keys or guest towels or maybe even by a front door. Again, let me know in the comments how you would use it. Now it's time for our second project. I love little art pieces, especially on an easel. I like to stack them on books, put them in little tuck spots. They're just really charming, and I loved this chickadee bird. So I applied this napkin image to a five by five can stretched canvas panel and used Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel as my decoupage medium this time. I'm just applying the image. I really should have placed it uh, first, um, but it turned out okay, even though I um, you know, laid it right on top of wet medium. Again, I'm using my plastic wrap to adhere the paper and I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm going to sand off all of the edges on the piece and it'll be ready for the next steps. I 
I wanted to do a little mixed media bit of art on this piece. So I'm using a blending makeup brush to apply three coats of clear gesso. Gesso is going to protect the paper and give me tooth and a surface to work with. And so now what I'm doing is using modeling paste and my silicone spatula and a stencil. I just wanted to add a little stencil design. I could have mixed a paint color into this modeling paste, but at this point I knew I wanted the stencil, but I wasn't sure what color paint I was going to use. Next, I wanted to kind of give that stencil a little pop and shadow. And so I'm applying two colors of alcohol ink. This is a provincial yellow. And then I'm also going to add a little Calais green to this. I make my own alcohol inks and I'll be sure to share how to do that in another video. And once that was dry, I was ready for the next step. Here I'm just using a needle nose bottle to let it drip over the stencil and then wiping back any excess. I looked at it for a little bit and still wasn't sure on the paint color of that stencil, but I did know that I wanted to make some of the elements on the design pop. And to do that, I'm using a product called Diamond Glaze. It's a dimensional adhesive and when applied over images, it gives a beautiful under glass like effect. And so I like to apply this with my needle nose bottle again, because it's very precise. I chose to highlight the leaves, make those pop, the cherry blossoms I thought would be pretty if they were a little more 3D. And then I also did just a few places on the bird. And you'll see in the final pictures where this just really looks like it's glass in those areas. And I just think it gives a really pretty look. I did his beak and then what I didn't show on here was that I also did his little eye. I finally decided to use a metallic espresso paint and I started to apply it with my fingers but I wasn't getting quite the coverage that I wanted with that. So I came in with a small artist brush and I went over the raised stencil area and again it just gives a really pretty um, sparkly little dimension to this project. And I, I thought it was the perfect color. Once I was done with the stenciled area, I decided to use just the tiniest bit of that same metallic espresso color on the branches. And I did a little bit on the bird, just kind of on the bird's breast and around his head, just a little bit. So it's the slightest bit of sparkle. And I felt it just kind of tied in the color over the entire project. Next, it was time to address the easel. And I started by applying a coat of earth. This is a chalk synthesis paint color uh, by Wise Owl, and I painted the entire easel in that color. It takes a little bit of time. Um, spray painting could have caused the, um, the hinge at the top to stick, and so I thought it was just safest to paint this by hand. Once that was done, I also applied that same earth color to the edges of the canvas. And then with a little tool, I distressed the edges on the front of the canvas too. It just really kind of highlights everything. I then took that same metallic espresso color and just gently added a little bit of that to the sides of my canvas and to the easel. Again, I just felt it really tied everything together. And now it's done and I just love it. And I'm hoping you can really see that glass effect. Now it's time for project number three. This is our final project. The other beautiful napkin that I received had these gorgeous, colorful birds. There were hummingbirds and everything. And I decided to make magnets and you need a magnet board for magnets. So we're going to make that too. I wanted to pull in the colors from the, um, napkin onto my tin panel. The tin panel is going to be what um, is the magnetic board. And so bear with me because this is going to start to look a little crazy before it gets really good. 
I'm starting with Wise Owl's Red Rock. And then with a Seawool sponge, I'm applying all of these colors. I'm using a little bit of Joshua Tree, which is a beautiful green. It's become one of my favorite greens. And then I wanted to get a purple and I didn't have a purple. So I'm applying Prussian Blue. And again, this is all just really random. And to make that purple, I'm going to mix a little bit of Rock Steady, which is a really vibrant pink. And you can see how when mixed with the Prussian Blue, it creates the purple that I was looking for. I then decided to add a little bit more of that green. I'm going to do this same entire process over the frame as well. And again, just bear with me because I promise it gets better. It just looks a little crazy right now. So I'll do this on the frame, on the, um, the front of the frame, the sides of the frame, and I'll just go through the same process using all of those colors. Once all of that was dry, I'm using cracked patina and a clean seawool sponge, and I am randomly applying this to my tin, and I will also do this on the frame. I'm gonna let that dry, and while, it's, while it is drying, I'm going to go ahead and choose my birds for my magnets. Again, I'm going to remove just the very top image layer, and I chose four different designs. I'm using these little two and a half by two and a half square uh, panel canvas boards and just decoupaging the images onto the front. I chose to do four magnets, each with a different bird. I'll set these aside and let them dry and then I'll decide what the next step is. I just turn the images on the canvas until I like how they look and then apply them. I'm taking off the edges again with the sanding block and then I ended up having to do another one of that that beautiful bird because there was a little bit of damage on the canvas that I didn't see at first so once they were done I felt that they just needed a little something extra so I took some little pieces of napkin and applied those in the areas there was just a little too much white space on some of them, before I did that, I went ahead and painted over the napkin image that I didn't want anymore. And I did this so that that wouldn't show through the flowers that I'm decoupaging onto the top. I liked them so much better with this little touch and now I feel like they're really complete. To seal them, I'm using that diamond glaze again. I'm going to, much like you do a cookie with royal icing, I'm going to do small sections and outline them and then flood the centers. This is a thick coat, so I do let it dry overnight. I wanna be careful not to get bubbles in it. If I do get a bubble, I can poke that with a pin or use a small brush to just remove that from the canvas by painting it off the edge or moving it off the edge with a paintbrush. So when it looks a little cloudy now, but again, when it dries, it's going to be crystal clear and it'll look like the magnets are under glass. I didn't get on camera the um, magnet that I applied to the back of these, but I used a little disc magnet. Here's the fun part. So now to tie all of this in together, I am coating this with the Snow Owl Chalk Synthesis Paint by Wise Owl again, and the cracked patina underneath is going to allow me to lift the color in places because the cracked patina offers a really authentic chippy look but it also acts as a resist. So that's why it works so well for something like this. I'm using a piece of plastic wrap to lift up the paint in areas and look at all that chippy goodness. I just love it. I'll do this to the frame as well. And once that was done, I came in with a baby wipe and then just gently wiped back on some of the raised areas of the tin panel. 
what I love is that I see just the slightest bit of those colors that are in the napkin images underneath that white paint. And so, as I said, I did this on the frame too. I did it on the top and on the sides. The back of the frame, I just did a dry brushing of white paint over the stained frame. You're really not gonna see that because I'll be adding a dust cover when all is said and done. Once all of the paint was dry, it was time to seal it. I'm using Wiseau's One Hour Enamel in matte. It's their clear coat. I wanted this to be as matte as possible and not shiny. And there you have it. I just love how it turned out. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know which of the three product, projects is your favorite. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. Um, share the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon.